Yeah, the moment you started talking about it, I was kind of like, oh, wait, you actually make your soup. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Because uh, tomatoes are acidy, acidy. <laughs> so. I never had a sandwich maker that actually cuts my sandwiches, uh, but I did have a sandwich maker for years. Just basically the just top bottom grills that you crush stuff between. Yep. And that's always, that's how I grew up knowing how to make grilled cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. And if you flip the plates, it's a waffle iron, right? Yeah. Like that's kind of Ooh. always been the thing. But that, it's so weird to me because growing up, because it'd be like time for grilled cheese sandwich. And my mother would pull this thing out and she would make grilled cheese on this device. She'd go through all the whatever, she'd plug the thing in, she'd wait for it to heat up and stuff, and then she's making it and she puts everything on there and then crushes the thing, and then you have to check it to make sure it's whatever. And I didn't know you could make grilled cheese in a pan or in any other <laughs> yeah. way. Huh. Because when like when you're a kid and you see things done a certain way, like right. that's just the order that's, of the yeah. universe. Yeah. That's just what you did. You know, when you leave home, you're like, what toothpaste do I buy? Well, I buy Crest. Why? Because that's the only toothpaste that exists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. what are all these other ones in the store? I don't even know what this is. Crest is what I use because that's the thing we bought. Yep. That's, uh, that was me for popcorn. Uh, my dad, when I was young, got an air popper, popcorn maker. I did not know that popcorn could be popped on a stove in a pot. I had no clue. Yeah, right? <laughs> that would be with steak. Uh, Mom and dad would always uh, throw a, they had a grill. they throw the steak on the grill. And it blew my mind when someone did it in the oven. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you can do that? The, 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 what, what happened when you went to buy your first bottle of laundry soap? <laughs> <laughs> right? You're just like, oh, no. <laughs> right? You have to go and, like, this was before cell phones, so I had to go and find a pay phone and call my mom. Right, right. <laughs> and she was like, just get unscented. And yeah. I'm like, what? Why is it that? Why? There's, like, 12 yeah. different varieties here. One's for, like... Air dry and ones for <laughs> like when I um, so I have my my skin is mm -hmm. sensitive mm -hmm. and I can't use and this is very counterintuitive but I can't use anything else other than Tide, right? Which is the harshest soap on the face of the earth apparently. It's like it's oh, really? the, the worst laundry soap because it has so much or at least at the time it like back in the seventies right mm -hmm. it had so much phosphates and stuff in it like all those kind of things but like when I was at the hospital they washed all my stuff in ivory snow because it's very mild, mm -hmm. and then they wrap me in it, and then they would unwrap me from my blankets, and I would just be like rashed out all over my whole body. And they didn't understand why, and so they would like, they'd say to my mother, can you bring, because I was in the incubator, so like, can you bring in some stuff? And they'd wrap me in the stuff from home, and I was fine. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, it's probably due to body chemistry or whatever, you know, how things are. But, um, so Tide was always a thing. That's very easy, I knew yeah. what to buy. Fabric softener, that's something you use, right? You have to get that. And then I would ask my mom, like, well, what do we use? She's like, just buy what we always use. And I'm like, well, I need to know what that is. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, is it downy? Is it snuggle? Is it uh, fleecy? Like, those, it's like, oh, we, sometimes we buy fleecy, but sometimes we buy that. Like, well, this is my skin. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to use. Like, I, and then, but the best part about that is then I'm dating Heather years later. Uh, and she's, and she says to me, yeah, you know, fabric softener is awful. I'm like, sorry, what? And she's like, yeah, you know how it softens your fabric, right? No. Well, it breaks down the fibers in your fabric so it feels softer. So you're saying I'm destroying my clothes slowly over time. She's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I stopped buying fabric softener. <laughs> and yeah. I haven't gone back. Everything I stopped is... buying it years ago, partly for that, but also because maybe it's because of the tide. It started irritating my skin. I have to get the the stuff that is easiest on you as possible now. Yeah. Because <laughs> that stuff is rough. Yeah. <laughs> and I think also clothing is being better made. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm noticing this as I'm like shopping for merch and stuff for, for Loading Ready Runs. It's like you start identifying how they're making shirts now and I start like comparing. I have a stack of shirts at the moon base made by different companies mm -hmm. so I can get hand. So I right. can tell what's this shirt going to be like, what's that shirt going to be like. Just stuff we've been getting as swag from different people. And I start to be very, very snooty <laughs> <laughs> when swag shows up from people and I'm like... Oh, Gildan. All right. Well, whatever. You know, like, you clearly didn't spend any time on this. You know, like, it's like, oh, hey, district, not bad. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, you went, you went next level, which is an actual company. You went next level. That's really nice. You went American Apparel, which is very expensive. You know, like, yeah. all right, well, these are good, but, you know, district's just as good in a lot of cases. And it's like, it's real weird how, um, and that's been kind of teaching me. It's like, you want a 60-40, but maybe you don't. Maybe you want to go 100% cotton. And then, or this tri blend that you can get now is a really nice way to do stuff. And the way they print stuff on shirts now is they don't do it with a plastisol backing. A lot of stuff is like, 
this dye based stuff and I'm learning all these things about yeah. fabrics and how you print things and like and it's been very interesting. Well, let me Ooh. tell you that we very much appreciate it because I I know I am now very spoiled <laughs> with how lovely the fan gamer shirts for Desert Bus and the Lure shirts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How wonderful they are and then I go I need another shirt. I go into the store and I start feeling them. I'm like, none of these are good. <laughs> yeah, mm. it's just it's just how like we've been picking nicer stuff. I think, I the the sense that I have is it has to if we're gonna do merch, it has to be something that I would want to have in my closet or on my desk or whatever, and also at a price that we can afford. So sometimes it's like I'm not gonna buy a twenty dollar blank for a shirt because that would be nuts, yeah. mm -hmm. but. You're kind of you're kind of balancing that with like how much am I willing to pay for a blank to get a good one, and then how much are we willing to like not make on the markup because it'd be better to spend a little bit more here just to have a nicer product. Mm -hmm. So we we do our best to try to you know to to make that uh, to make it so that it's like if I wanted a t-shirt if I want to wear a t-shirt at home it's like I would want to wear one of these t-shirts, and we don't have a, actually it should be clear too we don't have any control over how Fan Gamer prints their stuff. They just pick good shirts. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, the fan gamer ones are outstanding. Um, going back to the fabric softener conversation, mm. I kind of, if I had a time machine, one of the things I would do with it is go back and be in the room in the 1950s or 60s when a bunch of executives decided that Lily of the Valley was going to be the smell of fresh laundry for the next <laughs> century. <laughs> <laughs> Because that was a choice that was made, right? Yeah. The, the, the yeah. smell of fabric sheets is lily of the valley. Right. And it's like, so that's fresh spring scent, clean, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And that's now in my brain yeah. forever as the smell of what clean sheets are. I, when I go by... And that was a, like a deliberate decision that somebody made. Yeah. Like when I go buy soaps and stuff, I want them to smell like citrus. Because to me, lemon... Grapefruit and orange are very clean scents, mm -hmm. which is weird because they smell like food. And if you like squeeze orange juice all over your hands, it gets very sticky and it's not a clean thing. But there's something about those scents that mean this is a clean place. This is something something has come together to clean this place. You know, whereas it's like I don't want anything to smell like vinegar, but vinegar does a great job cleaning. Oh, <laughs> perfect. That's what I use around my house. Oh gosh, I was cleaning out the coffee machine at work with vinegar and. I was not popular around the office for several <laughs> hours. Oh yeah, well, I mean, like descaling the coffee machine with vinegar. Yeah, oh, works yeah. works brilliantly. It works fantastically. You yeah. Know, if you've got mm. a little bit of uh, essential like orange oil, you can put a couple drops in, and it does cut the vinegar smell a bit, mm. which can that. which can make it better. You have to be careful though, because if it goes through the coffee <coughs> maker, certain yeah. things should not be consumed. So you got to really make sure you rinse. Oh. Mm. The, but. Even even with the best of stuff, just no mixing anything with the vinegar. When I'm cleaning out the coffee machine, I will run a lot of water. They there's instructions for how much water you're supposed to run through it. I run three times that. Yeah. Because mm. you know, it, it, somebody on the office is going to say, "This still tastes like vinegar." <laughs> of course it does. You think it does. Cameron, we have.